half the time, maybe a bit less. Uh, the, if you just ask for a cross compiler, please, it will complain that it can't install because they go out of sync with uh, Debian changes theirs. It takes us a while to rebuild, um, uh, and that breaks, uh, which is very annoying. Uh, I, I get quite a lot of complaints and there's a lot on the mailing list saying you told me to install this compiler but it says oh, apt can't because of long complicated list of complaints um, there's this building them in Debian plan I don't know if that'll help do you want to say something about the uninstallability problem and or do you just want to talk about how this works <laughs> Um, hello. Uh, yeah, we uh, we have uh, agreed uh, mechanism to 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 have proper uh, cross compilers under Debian instead of having them in mDebian repositories. I guess nobody can read this, can you? No. Sorry, I had to make it fit on the screen, so I made it smaller. And you could we could have it so that you could only see the top three lines, and then you could read it. But. Um, we'll try and explain. Yeah, okay. Good plan. <clears throat> in fact, I'll keep that in case I need it later. Well, the, the uninstallability un problem is just some dependencies that the cross toolchain has with the GCC base package and 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 yeah, I think that's it. And maybe some other libraries. They there was a dependency with lib libgomp with this uh, library for uh, big machines with embedded doesn't care. And, but this has been removed because it it also co caused uh, problems with the native compiler. And it's right. it has been removed. So we. Are planning to the, and the problem is the, you, we have a one source package and we upload this source package into the build this and that builds the um, the native compiler. There isn't a PDF. I did make. <laughs> well, you upload a source package to to the auto builder and it builds the native compiler and we don't want to depend on the cross tool chains as well in the same source package so we need to to have uh, other source packages to upload into the build it is and uh, and this we have designed a way to, to do that by uh, maybe the other one mm. the uh, by on the other uh, diagram yeah, we, we have some source packages that depend on the binary packages containing the source, like the linker, the compiler, the uh, kernel headers. That one? Yeah. Okay, you have the linker, you have the compiler, you have the C library, and the kernel headers. All this is involved to, to build a cross tool chain. And... Uh, um, we have circular dependencies with uh, the C library and, and the compiler library, and we need to implement the uh, first first stage bootstrap bootstrapping in the in the Debian compile in yeah in the Debian compiler because right now only builds uh, two stage, and in order to fulfill these dependencies correctly, uh, from source you need to do a three stage bootstrapping of the tool chain and uh, the first stage need, needs to be implemented and basically uh, this is like a dependency tree and uh, and that's how we are going to build this tool chain I don't know you have uh, some questions about it or you want me to explain a little bit more or this m more technical you just can come up to me, I'm around, and we can talk about it. If or So the point about this is that this doesn't need any cross-dependencies, so we can do it with the existing builders, is that right? Yeah, and, and this will be done in Debian, so when 
GCC uploads, and then this will upload in the same day probably, and we'll have the same versions. We'll be right, right on, on, in, this, in synchronous. We'll be in, in sync. Yeah. The problem is that if you if you type d package build package in the glibc sources, nothing happens. No, that's <laughs> what I mean. You essentially create a small package that's built on that, That's what I'm talking about. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. You mean our diagram didn't make sense to you? <laughs> I can't see the diagram. <laughs> oh. My mistake. Okay. Um, yes, right, good. Do you know when, how long will this take before we move to doing it this way? Uh, this can be done uh, very well. We have to implement the first stage, bootstrapping. And then when, when that's done, then we can... Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, um, so that should be good. That'll be cool, I hope. Um, Maybe take half a year or yeah. <laughs> um so for those of you who've been following the multi arch debate, um this actually is quite fundamental to how people cross build things at the moment. Uh like I say, to some degree this is a cross compiling discussion and not an MDebian discussion, but obviously uh, quite a lot of us are cross building things. I don't know how many people here cross build things? Okay. A few. How many people have ever used MDebian for anything? Yeah. Slightly more. Um, yeah. Wait for the wait for the mic. Uh, in my packages, Neil have sent me patches to support cross compilation. Is there any way I could test that this is still working because during one of the changes we drop one of the variables and it, it stopped cross compiling? So is there anything I could do to test that cross compilation is still working in my packages? There's yeah, there's there's a couple of ways. Uh so there's two parts to this. There's cross building it at all, i.e. exactly the same package or or there's cross building it in mdebian which implies applying our patches as well um you want to test the bare package just the cross build part uh, no what i mean is if there is any way like uh, running few parts to cross compile my packages so it's still working and i see if it's you working can just or test or it's it you mean working. yeah you can get the cross compiler from the M Debian repository or Zune from Debian it's, uh, uh, directly and uh, try compiling your package with a D package, build package dash A, uh, some target architecture you have a cross compiler for. So fundamentally it's that simple, yeah. Instead of typing D package build package dash R fake root, you type D package build package dash A armiel dash R fake root, I see did. if it works. But the problem with that is that you need all the cross dependencies installed. That allow it to build, and that's the hard part. Um, now I you know what your cross dependencies are for, for your own package. It's not too difficult to install all the cross dependencies, which you do with dpackage cross or apt cross. You should be able to say apt cross package your package, and it goes and gets all the cross dependencies and installs them. But in practice, that doesn't always work. It works if your package is very simple. <laughs> um, yes, but it would be very nice if this could be integrated in, let's say, PO parts. Okay, yeah. Because I always run PO parts with my packages. So you don't want to, you don't want to know anything. <laughs> you just, you just want it to work. Okay. I mean, yes, uh, you're right. That will be really nice. And yes. no, it's not in PO parts. I don't know how easy that is. Does it? Yeah, that'd be a useful thing for somebody to do. Yeah, I don't know how hard it is. Uh, also, I have uh, set up an experimental uh, repository of dpackage cross packages for ARMEL. 
So you can just uh, point up at it and you get up, uh, get all the um, lib, lib something dash armyl dash cross packages. Yeah, so the point is the cross packages, you can either build them from the ARM repository and actually generate a cross package now, this minute, or if somebody somebody could do it in all advance so that every package that needs crossing is already crossed uh, and then apt can just get it. So you don't need the, to do the crossing, you don't need the cross machinery to work, but you still need to install the dependencies. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to figure out how to do this and send the patch to the people. So yeah, I, people. I'd like to be able to use okay. pbuilder effectively to do, you know, pbuilder's good. It would be nice if pbuilder cross worked, but fundamentally it doesn't yet. So that's actually the big, the, in practice, our, our cross building for the um, MW and oh, Leo, the light writer, um, I use it, do it work, works, except for the fact that the automatic dependent installation of cross dependencies isn't really ready yet. So you have to you have to tend your cheroots and make sure they've got the right things in advance. And you you depend on the cross compiler. So the first step is to get the cross compiler into proper Debian. So you can integrate in pure parts or whatever build the build systems. And also this is very helpful for QMU people. We have a talk afterwards uh, to build uh, some BIOS, uh, BOSC, or these kind of things they, they, they build for other architectures and, and right now they, they do it manually or do it or either have to hack it a little bit. And this is, so the first step is getting the cross compilers into Debian and then yeah. all, everything will, will come. Yeah, then there's something for all the cherooting build tools to depend on and say, well, you need this part. So yeah, you're right. That would be really nice. I mean, that's that's nearly where we're at. Where we have all these things starting to happen, so that it's it's looking like this will be possible. And also, um, there's there's be there's very few, few people of us, and not all not all of us are working 100% uh, on on Mdebian. If this is uh, like a problem. yeah, a few more people getting excited about going. Oh, really? I could do that. That sounds useful. <laughs> um, would help things go faster. Do you want to say something else? No. Okay. Um, I am the light writer. <laughs> there we are. That light writer. That's all cross built. Um, and in fact, is running MDebian grip. So people really do use it. Where is it? <laughs> Where is it? It's sat at the back, plugged into the sound system. <laughs> oh, okay. um, so, yes. So I get to do this for work, which is good. Dependency stuff all changes. Um, yeah, so this is about the transition to multi arch, really. Um, I guess we covered that. Um, one, th uh, one thing. Uh, Back. That, that one thing that just popped to my mind. Uh, okay for Debian, not for variants. Um, would it make sense to? Ah, yeah. Sorry, that's what I was going to say. To have uh, uh, another triplet for variants and basically treat them as uh, treat your variants as a separate architecture and. Uh, still remain within the multi-arc system? No, because, so the problem here is uh, multi-arch is great, lets you install all the cross dependencies side by side and build things and it's all very simple. Uh, the, the whole process actually gets simpler because now you just want the package. Uh, you don't need a special package munged into the native architecture with a different name so that we can install them side by side. It all just works. However, it only works because the um, host... Now, for those of you not familiar, the terminology here is thoroughly confusing. The build machine is called build. The machine you're building for is called host, which most people kind of think of as the build machine. Um, and you don't call it target because that's something else only to do with cross-compilers. So when I say host, I mean the thing we're building for. Um, this stuff, a multi-arch only really works where the host uh, versions of stuff that you're trying to build is exactly the same as the build versions of stuff that you're trying to build because as soon as you run binaries or check config files um, if they're different it'll all fall over because the only thing you've got the foreign version of is the libraries you haven't got the foreign version of the config files or um, user share anything which defines uh, what was supported by this build of the package um, so it only works basically if you're trying to build something that's almost exactly the same as the system you're building it on, 
which is a major limitation. As soon as you're doing proper embedded, you tend to want to build it without LDAP and without X. Um, and you actually want to make changes in the packages. And now the config files have changed, but you can't install the host version of the config file and the target version of the config file on top of each other. So you, you have to do it in a cheroot, or at least uh, a GCC sysroot, maybe, um, in order to have a whole file system containing all the stuff you need um, and the problem with that is that you also have to have all the tools in there. You've got to install Scrollkeeper and LaTeX for building documents and HTML tools and all sorts of garbage you didn't want just so that you can build the package. So um, a lot of the stuff we've been talking about this week allows you to cross-build Debian. doesn't necessarily allow you to cross-build something a bit like Debian, which in practice is what most embedded people want to do. That's um, a more complicated problem. Uh, and it's important to bear that in mind when thinking about different ways of doing things. Did that make sense? Have I mm. lost everybody yet? Basically, if we just link against the libraries, but yeah, we his don't idea care about the config files. Yeah, but you don't just link against libraries. When you build something, a, s a very simple package, you just link against libraries, but anything at all GUI runs all sorts of weird checks and things to determine... I mean, even just the, the, the tools... the Autoconf can go and check stuff whether such and such is supported and if it finds a library for X it'll go and build it with X it's supported and that's not what you wanted so you have to do configure without blah yeah well but uh, the, the autoconf checks usually know yeah, I mean, about cross compiling the, the autoconf checks should work and if it's not we can fix that but there's as soon as you run binaries like oh I don't know someone find me a good example you need to look th sorry okay um, font config, I think, is actually quite a good example. Font config knows where it should look for its config, so um, it's very likely to get the build systems config, not the target systems config, and then generate stuff with a whole load of fonts you haven't got and didn't want on the, the machine you're trying to build. But I think in practice there are lots of examples of this problem. We haven't come across it too much because we build relatively simple things that just needs libraries and tools. But as soon as you get into GUI building, have we got any of the mayor people here? You know about this, don't you? You see, you just avoided the whole thing by using Scratchbox, so it all goes away. <laughs> um, but, I mean, the reason Scratchbox was created, well, one of the reasons was that it is very hard to get all those tools and things to be right if you try building in the the host system without a cheroot. Um, so we can build all of GPE, and that works. Um, but we mostly do it in a cheroot anyway, just to be sure. So it's something to think about. Um, but yeah, I quite like your idea of a separate architecture. That Well, no, that solves... It's interesting. But I don't think it solves the version skew problem, as perhaps I shall call it. So another big part of this is what happens if you want to build a different version of things. There's, there's relatively simple stuff, like taking the docs out, which works very well in grip. Um, it would be nice if we could get no docs support in the build tools like Deb Helper and CDBS. Um, the, so as a Debian build option, like no strip, no test, which I think are the only two that are normally supported, is that right? Um, is there a debug option? Um. A debug is sort of implied by by no, no strip. Yeah. Okay. Basically, uh, the policy says we always build with debug symbols and then strip them off. Mm -hmm. So one of the few things that's fairly obvious is you know basically every mdebian patch avoids running dh docs, dh install docs, so that they don't get installed. Um, that works fine, but it does mean you don't end up with a copyright file either, which you might argue is. Um, not kosher with the GPL. Um, Mike? You, you you cannot trust Dep Helper and CDBS to do all the things that gets installed in, in, in Doc. No, so true. There's nothing to stop people just copying them in as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we'd have to patch that too. But, but most things these days just list the files and get Dep Helper to do them, do they not? Or CDBS. Or CDBS, exactly. I mean, um, I see I see fewer and fewer exception lines doing things manually. 
um, in, in a lot of packages it just does the right thing uh, but you're right uh, you can't rely on that it's not a complete solution and or they use them and then they rename things afterwards or things yes. like that so that renaming will, will, will break if you try to override or su suppress mm -hmm. these parts of the development it, it's true Basically, that's a major limitation in Dep Helper. You cannot rename uh, files while installing them. The agent install only supports a, a target directory, not a target file name. So, if you ha want to have a file with a different name that in the resulting package than it has had in the source package, you need to rename it either uh, before uh, before uh, uh, DH install time or afterwards. Mm, yes, true. Um, so yeah, so uh, the Deb Helper No Docs patch has been installed since May two thousand and seven or something. So um, you have to persuade Joey it's a good idea. Um, it is a bit crufty, but it's a very easy win. Effectively, that's what Grip does, <laughs> pretty much, um, and it is quite effective. He's not here, is he? Lazy bugger. Um, there is an alternative to this, which is to use dpackage filters. So you make the package the same as before, um, but then you filter at install time, which is more reliable because you'll definitely remove everything in user shared doc. Um, so the package size doesn't decrease. You still got to download it, um, but in a lot of contexts that doesn't matter much. Um, so I guess that's something we should look at some more. Does Grip use dpackage filters to actually do the filtering? Nobody knows. We need Neil. Um, I think so. Um, what else? A much harder problem. Uh, oh, here's an interesting idea which Jonas had yesterday. So, one thing we've discovered from doing this: if you make an MW and Grip root, it's about 90 megabytes for a base system, you know, which is quite a lot better than 400 meg or whatever, 200 and something out of a um, that's our base system with a fair amount of libraries in it. Um, however, as soon as you do app get update the first time and point it at Debian, it gets 50 or 60 megabytes bigger. So it gets more than half as big again just because of the package files, the list files, the cache files, all that stuff for managing our marvelous package system. Um, and that's a big overhead. Uh, you know, if it was 10 meg, that would be good. If it was 20 meg, that wouldn't be too bad. 60 meg is far too much. <laughs> Um, and a lot of that's just the size of the package list, you know, it's 22 megabytes compressed. Um, so, uh, one thing we do in Grip is chop off all the long description apart from the first four lines, which makes an enormous difference to the size of the package file. So that's a good idea. Um, Jonas suggested we could generate better package files on the fly. You could have a little proxy thing. So this would allow you to use real Debian. Um, but still to have a sensible size packages list. Um, uh, and also filter it further using uh, dev tags. So that yes. you only get the, 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 it only includes in the, in the final list, includes the uh, packages that is tagged in dev tags as being relevant for this mm -hmm. uh, embedded device. So you know, we can tag everything embedded, um, which will get you part of the list, and I don't know, um, You'd have to work out what suitable tags are, but we, we can have any tags we like, is that right? Or we have to ask Enrico for new tags? I believe you can throw in tags. We can even have repositories of dip tags ourselves, but that's more cool to work together with the dip tags people, of mm. course. So that's actually quite an interesting idea, because you now make an amazing array of distributions just by making new lists and pointing at the normal thing and then using dpackage filter to filter stuff out. Interesting idea. Um, so dpackage vendor, um, how are we going to explain this? So I don't know how this works. Okay, I tried to find out last night. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't think anybody else does either, apart from about Neil is about the only person in the world who's actually used it. Simon's thought about it quite a lot. So this came out of the um, Debian work session a bit over a year ago here, um, where we were trying to work out a mechanism for dealing with the fact that hundreds of people make variants of Debian. Ubuntu is the most famous. Um, are we second most famous yet? I guess not. Uh, <laughs> Linpus or somebody. Um, 
Nopics, yeah, okay. Do they actually build from Debian sources? I'm not sure what they do. All sorts of weird shit. Um, I think they do now, yeah. Okay. Um, so, and, and they all want to build something with some changes in the rules files, generally. Um, we certainly found that we can do everything we want by only changing stuff in the Debian directory. We never have to change anything in the package itself. Or almost never. Um, you can pretty much do what you need um, by changing the Debian directory stuff, which is nice. That limits the surface of the problem. Um, but it would be nice to have a generic way. Yeah, so the, the problem with all the patches is that they're hard to maintain. We want to put it into the package, but we can't really have every package listing if Debian do what I normally do, if mDebian do something they told me to do, if Ubuntu do something else they told me to do, and so on for a list of 100 distributions. That doesn't seem very maintainable. Um, the dpackage vendor stuff also has inheritance, so basically um, we just uh, t tell it to if it's Debian or derived from, from Debian and not derived from mDebian or Ubuntu, then do this. Okay, so we can have hierarchical rules. Yes. Okay, which might work. Um, doesn't that mean you need to know what the other guys did uh, in order to decide what to do? Um, um, basically, you you uh, base your distribution off uh, an existing one, and uh, so you tell the package render that you are deriving okay. there, and all the packages will basically default uh, to to the distribution you are deriving from, and then you just have to at the patches you need. Okay, so the attractive idea is that, that the 97% of packages which are the same as whatever you chose for your upstream you don't do anything to and the few you want to change you add some information. So in, in theory this is quite a nice generic thing but as you can see it, this is the sort of thing people have to put in there. So the top half is the obvious way of doing this in a, in a rules file. You, know, you check the vendor thing and <coughs> if, it's, if it's not Debian then do something, you know, add a whole load of different configure args, which, which isn't very beautiful. Um, actually, it's uh, actually it's even worse than this because you have to check the inheritance tree, like um, you have to do it yourself. It doesn't kind of magically happen. Yeah, basically, you you have a list of things you you check. For example, you start by checking, uh, am I uh, am I on mDebian? And the answer is either yes or no. Um, if the answer is no, then you can ask, am I on Ubuntu? If the answer is no, then am I on Debian? The answer is probably going to be yes, because every distribution is derived from Debian. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Did somebody else? Uh, uh, what? You want to talk? I don't know. The, this, is n this is not very, um, like, the nicer solution. This is the better solution we have come up with. And if, if you come up with a better solution, it'll be good. Because uh, the package maintainers don't like uh, to have like, uh, let's say you have 10 or 15 dist derived distributions. You don't want to pollute all your rules files with uh, all this this an entrance for each uh, variant. So the idea of the, the the lower half of this screen is is a, a recent suggestion for making this generic or more generic. So you you run this. M vendor with a vendor and a package uh, and the key and basically we have sorry oh there is yes hi please don't do the lower one because uh, because if it's not equal to Debian if it's Ubuntu say then we get the embedded version of the package and while we like it we don't necessarily want to have Ubuntu be an embedded distribution uh, that's true yeah um, but the point was you'd set your vendor to whatever so you would have set when you're doing your build that overall you say my distribution is Ubuntu so now it would say M vendor um, vendor Ubuntu package of Ahi key whatever yeah but that require that, that, that would then require us to modify every single source package in Debian to say to say Ubuntu is like right. Debian Whereas the DPKG vendor stuff supports the inheritance, which which we um, which we were involved in, because because that's useful for us. So we just, if we want to make, uh, so we can say we are derived from Debian, and then we can have um, DPKG vendor derives from Ubuntu, 
which we would use for our customization so that our derivatives then inherit so our So you're changes. already using this mechanism? Uh, it's very new, so we haven't we haven't deployed it much yet. But we were involved in the creation of it, so that yeah. So we like it because <laughs> because yeah. it allows us to. Um, and well, I think that's more, more of the reason why it's happened. Does asking for stuff doesn't necessarily cause much action. I guess Ubuntu asking for stuff is a little bit more. Uh, the, I <laughs> I don't think we asked for it, but right. um, but yeah, I think we we, we thought of it, and and people went, we should tell the Ubuntu people because they might like this. It might be useful. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. it, it's good, and uh, the inheritance stuff is is good for us because um, we we want to we want to say that we inherit from Debian, so we get ninety nine percent of the packages correct, like you said. Indeed. Um, but also support our derivatives. Okay, so I guess we should sit down afterwards and look at what. I, I agree. I agree. There could be a better way of doing this, so the tools support it more. You said um, largely, you know, the package maintainer shouldn't really have to do anything. You want. Some magic so that you know it's just set and and stuff happens. But, but I think but somewhere I think somewhere it has to say what happens for the different variants. And the question is where should it say that really? Should yeah. it go in the rules the, file? The the maintainer doesn't necessarily want to know about every single different variant of no. Debian there is. But there's also an argument that um, when you open a Debian rules file, you should know what it's going to build. You shouldn't have to you shouldn't have to then go and check a separate repository which says here are the changes that are made for this Indeed. distribution. Indeed, and that's what the second flavor does, that actually goes and looks off in slash etc for, you know, etc, package name, key name, blah, you know, basically you put in a little database of, of things. And the problem with that is, as you say, you've broken the fairly fundamental idea that the rules file does tell you what's going well, to happen. You, you could, you could, you could, uh, we could actually use the second version, but just write it in a slightly different way so that you don't necessarily, you, so you don't get the embedded version if you're not Debian. No, no, no. So it should be it should be a check for if we're derived from mDebian then mm -hmm. we use the second version or something. Um, but yeah, something something in the tool so you can do um, uh, package name dot install dot Ubuntu or package name dot install dot mDebian which doesn't include the documentation or something like that. That mm -hmm. might be that might be an interesting thing to pursue later. Okay. Good. Thank you. For Just time. for the clarification, who are you? Uh, us is it? Uh, are you representing Ubuntu, or, or is it? Are you talking about something else? Just, just curious. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. Ubuntu, okay. For the video, yeah. thanks. Okay, um, this is an enormous subject, and we've only got a quarter of an hour left. Uh, does anybody else want to say anything about this whole? What the hell do we do about variant stuff? Uh, or again, just for clarification, this example you're showing here, that is intended for being put into each package or that is intended to be put into a DPK vendor configuration file master on the that system goes, that, that you're building? That, that's, that goes in the rules file. Oh. Uh, it's not pretty, is it? <laughs> yeah, the, the biggest problem basically is if we want to use the inheritance stuff, um, then basically, the, the, uh, since we, uh, there is no ordering um, on on the names of the uh, of the of the d different distributions, it's very hard to decide. Uh, for example, if we have a um, uh, if we have uh, if we have a uh, if Deb helper gained support for Deb uh, dpackage vendor, and there was uh, some install dot Debian, install dot mDebian, and install dot Ubuntu, then um, it's pretty. Uh, uh, that's a simple case, uh, basically, because um, it's uh, it's pretty obvious um, uh, which one is uh, which one is the most specific, because it's uh, be because they, these form a tree. But um, at some point it becomes. Uh, uh, but for example, if you uh, just have install files for two base systems, like. Um, uh, embedded uh, Debian and embedded Ubuntu or something like that, um, or, em em uh, or embedded Debian and Ubuntu, and you end up with an embedded Ubuntu system, um, which which install file should take precedence? Mm, yes, uh, it is tricky. I mean, I think something to think about, bear in mind when thinking about this, is that there's a set of changes which are actually changes by type. And not really anything to do with the distribution as such. You know, no docs is actually just that. Take out the docs. You know, now that's something that a set of distributions would like. Um, but there will also be a set of changes which really is quite specific to the distro. And yeah, you know, and, and this is a mechanism to let you choose both of those things. But 
I think we should try to have generic mechanisms like no strip and things which are you know entirely agnostic and just have a pur a, some purpose we can actually define and is useful and is worth doing uh, because one thing that is given the binary distribution focus of Debian there is a limit to how customized things can be you know without rebuilding we can only build a fairly small set of things uh, you know a headless Debian um, kind of get that already but you know a small Debian for a headless box a small Debian for a PDA um, like like Hector and me also just dis discussed a little bit yesterday I see that a difference between uh, some of the flags we are using today as the uh, uh, no strip and then uh, some of the, th the, the things that are needed here the difference I see in this is that things like like no strip you don't want to uh, ship such a package t typically you want to build it for testing purposes, and then you want to throw it away again and have it go back to the proper package. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, things like uh, NoX or uh, NoDoc is uh, typically things that you want to ship. Yep. So I'll throw in the, the idea. The way I see it is like what we're talking about here. Yes, the technically the mechanism should be like flagging, similar to the ones we know today. But the difference would be like I would call it flavoring, like. A very few packages, Debian packages today, have uh, multiple builds providing actually uh, separate binaries, binary packages for uh, variants of, for instance, libraries or variants of, of packages like no GNOME versions of uh, the package or like I do with one package that people have shouted at me about was providing a no X version of libgd. Uh, that is really uh, different flavors mm -hmm. and I think we, if we're in the discussion of trying to find a common uh, sense of what kind of flavors do we want separate from the discussion of what kind of flags do we want to, to signal mm. for the compilation. You're right actually there's a lot to be said for a package knowing how to build s these several variants, Yeah, basically different configures sets uh, and it spits all those out and, and the problem at the moment is that you always have to build all of them I guess which you know is a bit slow, perhaps, um, uh, and yeah. If we, if we could, uh, one thing that's really important is if you change the dependencies by not having X, for example, it does need to be a different package name, uh, at least um, if you want it to go anywhere near the rest of the Debian packages. If you if you want to mostly use Debian uh, and change something like that, it has to be a different package name. You can't just go changing it. That is that is exactly why I'm talking about this not being a compile compile flag, but a handling of flavors because mm -hmm. like. I'm working on, on, on sup I have support for this, not officially, but I am working on pushing it into the official CDBS support for flavoring so that you simply say, oh, there is two different flavors. Then it actually, from the full build system, uh, makes sure that it uh, gets rerouted into uh, multiple binary packages. So there's different way uh, places in the, uh, in the chain that could use this flavoring mechanism, not as a we force all uh, uh, Debian developers, we, they should all support these and obey all these flavors. No, no, it's optional. If you want to be nice to the Debian people, then have in mind if this package might want to provide a NoX version also. Mm -hmm. If you say, what the fuck, this is so tied to X that it only makes sense to build it together with X, then don't support this flavor. But just having a common uh, consensus on what flavors are what, what are we talking at mm -hmm. multiple optional variants? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's very sensible. Uh, so uh, we're a bit short of time, so I, I think we need to talk some more about that. I think that's a really good idea. Um, but just to cover the other issues that we care about in case uh, anyone gets excited. Um, C library, oh, it's not a big deal, but it does ship an enormous amount of time zone crap and uh, not time zone, um, the, all the locale information, which we then from which you generate the actual locale information. And it kind of annoys me that to get my two megabyte C library, which I've got to have pretty much, um, ignoring the whole UC Libsy thing, um, I have to have four megabytes of, of files for locales I never wanted to use. Um, and so in Familiar, they do this by pre generating them all, and, and you only install a tiny little bit, and that's much nicer. Um, the uh, Aurelian doesn't actually want to change it all for Debian, although it is going to get compressed, which will make it a lot smaller than it is now. But um, if anyone wants to work on uh, a better packaging of glibc for our purposes, that will be nice. Um, 
the biggest problem we found in Crush or using BusyBox instead of Core Utils is the millions of maintainer scripts and init scripts that use command options that aren't in BusyBox. Grep.x dash x is a good example. Quite a lot of things do grep dash x uh, in their scripts. Uh, if you replace the normal grep with BusyBox grep, it doesn't work. Script blows up, package isn't installed. Um, that's a big deal. I think this should be treated kind of the same way as shell versus bash. You need to declare whether you're using the fancy GNU stuff or not. Um, but we have to work out where. The problem is that core utils is essential. So for Debian's purposes, you don't need to declare that you depended on it. It just kind of is. But somewhere it should say. And I'm not quite sure where somewhere is. Uh, but if anyone has a good idea, um, we could then start working through and filing bugs against things that use the extra options without saying so, and we could fix them. Um, well, we could use an x dash uh, control field, just uh, just uh, to mark packages as as requiring core utils blah. Yeah, or as not requiring and uh, and if at uh, and, uh, at the start uh, we could have like a field uh, saying okay this package is clean mm. and. Um, at so, at some point, just decide all the that that we are now going to ta start taking the other way around. Okay. Or maybe use dev tags. So yeah. to have it external to the package. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we could do is basically have a have a wrapper package that um, uh, that just um, diverts all the core utils and replaces them with a, with a uh, small uh, script that checks if any options uh, that are not inside uh, in, in the BusyBox uh, variant of the, uh, okay. of the tool. So you mean an easy way for maintainers to actually check because often they don't know? Yeah, or basic, uh, yeah main for maintainers and also users basically to, to um, have a way of verifying that the system is still going to work when, when switching to BusyBox. For example, we, we could just log um, oh, this script just called uh, this tool with this flag, which is not supported, and so, so we can uh, so we can find them easily. Mm -hmm. Just have a log file of uh, of all. Yeah, um, that sounds good. So I want to write that. That'd be really useful. Uh, the way I hear it, it sounds nice, but it puts a burden on all of those uh, doing the, the Debian <laughs> to, to test it really. Uh, I'm thinking a way to, to do the opposite is to provide a package, like provide a build. Uh, I don't know how uh, BusyBox uh, is, is provided now. If it's possible to install BusyBox without exploding your there uh, normal system. There's but a version is, on Debian which doesn't explode your system, I believe. Okay. Uh, so install a BusyBox and then make a symlink for, uh, make a package that makes the symlinks for grep and provides grep. Then in the normal Debian system, you have an alternative grep, which then makes it easier for you, people to actually install the uh, alternative similar to Dash instead of Bash. Yeah. Uh, and then we can start the cultural thing of saying to people, hey, whoa, we really ha have to make sure that if you are using this funky, ba uh, funky uh, grab, the, the GNU gra grab options, then, then, uh, then it breaks for other variants of grab that is actually available for normal users. And then we can have, uh, uh, start pushing, mm -hmm. uh, please do this, and then so we can have it in, uh, in the uh, Lintian and we can uh, start filing bug reports with concrete examples of how they can verify this instead of it being a geeky thing to compile uh, in Debian so to, just to test this. Yeah, that's actually kind of related to the other point which is making it possible to have a BusyBox say system but install um, the real version if you need real mount because you want to do something exotic or you need real find or something um, making it so that this certainly didn't work a while ago, and I'm not sure if it does work now because BusyBox has moved on. We need to check. I know we ran out of time. Um, uh, install BusyBox, and if, if you install Find, Find Utils, you get the real version of Find, overwriting the BusyBox version without barfing that it's impossible and the files conflict. And then, ideally, you take it away again, you get the BusyBox one back. That would be really neat. Um, uh, so we need to test it. So, um, we've run out of time. There are lots of things to do. I hope some of that was interesting. Um, we could do with some more people doing them because uh, it's complicated and uh, you get to kind of persuade the whole world. It's a very slow process. But it is nice to see we started doing this seriously two or three, year, three years ago and uh, quite a lot of stuff is now starting to change. So it does work. Uh, 
and please come and talk to those of us with big mouths about any of this stuff if you have ideas or can help. Is there any way we could do something about this with the Open Moco people yes, in Debian? Yes, I'm sure they have exactly the same desires for many but of I these problems. I already have my free runner <laughs> and I want to do Join something with that. Yeah, I mean, uh, clearly, mDebian on, on Freerunner is the thing I should be doing today. So uh, let's have a go. I don't know if it works. Does it work? Right, okay. Uh, we have to stop. Uh, thank you. Um,